श्रोत्तर श्री श्री श्रीमद भय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत जगदुर श्री प्रभुपाद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिव्राज का जय श्रोत्तर श्रद श्री भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गो स्वयं महाराज शील प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय नामाचार्य शील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण जय धन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की जय व्रजभूमि वृंदावन मथुरा धाम की जय पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय द्वारकापुरी धाम की जय न्यू द्वारका धाम की जय द मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस डिसअपियस डे ऑफ गौर किशोर दास बाबा जी महाराज की जय Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories, all glories, all glories to Shri Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga All glories to Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Ki Jaya Om Adhyana Timirandhasya Dhyana Anjana Shalakaya चक्षुन्मीलिम ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं कदाहम ददा स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीयुता पदकमल श्रीगुरुन वैष्णवा श्रीरूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथ दम सजीव साद्वैत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधाकृष्ण पाद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्वितांश नमा विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी निधिनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमो गौर किशोराय साक्षात वैराग्यमूर्त विप्रलंबर सांबोधे पादाबोजाते नम Hare Krishna. So today we are celebrating the holy disappearance day of Gaur Kishor Das Baba Ji Maharaj. So his pranati is Namo Gaur Kishoraya Sakshat Vairagya Murtaye Vipralamba Rasam Bode Padam Bojayate Namaha. This meaning is that I offer my humble obeisances at the lotus feet of Gaur Kishor Das Baba Ji Maharaj, who is Sakshat Vairagya. murti means that he is the very embodiment or personification of renunciation and he is serving the lotus feet of radha krishna in the mood of separation vipralamba rasambode so this is how he is serving radha and krishna in the humble mood of separation vipralamba bha which is considered even higher than the rasa of union so we will discuss about the different aspects of the personality of the great baba ji maharaj especially uh, we are not very you know, keen on understanding what is renunciation most of the times we take the concept of yukta vairagya and apply it to our desires and to our uh, comfort and wherever we want and in the name of yukta vairagya a lot of sense gratification happens so gaur kishore das baba ji maharaj he was very strict renunciate and he comes in the category of the baba ji's avadhutas avadhutas means the personalities who do not mingle with 
Maya or the material energy of Krishna at all. That's called Avadhut personality. For example, there was one time that Srila Prabhupada's disciples brought to Srila Prabhupada's attention that there is one renunciate, that very a, a personality who claims to be very renounced, and he takes pictures. He likes to pose with a bunch of money and he poses like this, that, oh, there is a bunch of money and he is like posing like, ah, I, this ridiculous money. And then Prabhupada said, actually, I would also like to pose, but instead of with bunch of money and going like ridiculous pose, like I don't care about money, I would like to take picture like this, that I am embracing that bunch of money. And then the, when the disciples were confused, Sri Prabhupada said that we are not the falgu vairagis, like we are not fake renunciates who take, you know, renun in the name of renunciation we make a show. And rather, Prabhupada said that we will take the money and put in the service of the owner of that money, who is Krishna. So Sri Prabhupada's mood and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj's mood is to gain or to mingle or to take um, Maya or the external energy of Krishna and apply it in the service of Krishna. But we have to understand that there is one category of the Vaishnavas who are co called Avudhutas, you know different Vaishnavas, even in Bhagavatam we hear about a lot of different Vaishnavas and they are in the Avadhut category. And who is the topmost Avadhuta? Anybody knows? Yes, Vrishabh Dev is one of them. Nityanand Prabhu, yes, very, that's the best example. Nityanand Prabhu or Balram, he is the topmost, the crest jewel of Avadhutas. So, <clears throat> Babaji Maharaj was Avadhuta, meaning that he would not mingle with the material energy. We can also see the example of Shukdev Goswami, who was in the womb of the mother and he didn't want to come out. Because he said that, I don't want to come out of the womb because in the womb, you know, it's all dark and I can, I'm, I'm in seclusion and I can do my bhajan, I can remember Krishna, I can be on my own and I can be happy. I can be here forever. Krishna had to personally come and tell Shukadeva Goswami that don't worry, I promise and I guarantee you that my external energy will not affect you. Then only Shukadeva Goswami came out. So these are different categories of such personalities. And Srila Prabhupada uh, very specifically tells us that we should not imitate such personalities. Because we cannot imitate such personalities. Even if we try, we will fall on our face. So here, such great Avadhuta personality is Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. Uh, he was born on the river of Padma in 1800s and then he was also married. He was born in the Vaishya family, in the family of the grain merchants. And then he was also married because those days, you know, kids would be married at very young age. And then he was married and he entered Grihastha life and he was a grahastha for 29 years. He spent as a perfect grahastha. He was also had his occupation and he would perform a lot of charity. And he spent a very nice and exemplary grahastha life. But when his wife departed from this world, he decided to go to Vrindavan. He decided to be a Babaji. Here in this regard, we also understand that he was young at that time. He could have married again. He could have gotten another wife. But rather he took this as Krishna's indication to renounce the world and seek happiness in the higher reality, in the bhajan of Krishna. So he went to Vrindavan and he spent 30 years in Vrindavan. And he got initiation from Bhagavad Das. Babaji Maharaj, who is disciple of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So that, this is how the line is. So that time, Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj gave him instruction that you stay in Vrindavan and do 
भजन यू बी अ बाबा जी यू ओनली गो एंड बैग डोर टू डोर डू माधुकरी एंड वट एवर इफ समन गिव यू यू ईट दैट इफ समन डज नॉट गिव यू एनी थिंग देन यू फैस्ट सो ही वॉज वेरी वेरी ऑस्टियर एक्चुअली इट इज सैड दैट ही रेयरली डिड माधुकरी he would only eat the mud from the banks of yamuna and that was his everything and he would only chant he would chant 300000 names of krishna that's like a lot means all day he was constantly chanting and especially in vrindavan he was constantly in the mood of separation that's called vipralamba rasa the vipralamba rasa means that we feel intense and immense separation from krishna and because of that immense separation we the devotee he naturally becomes so connected with krishna because of the separation that he sees krishna everywhere you know that separation vipralamba rasa is even higher than the sambhoga even having krishna face to face So who is the topmost devotee in Vipralamba Rasa? And anybody else? Yeah, Shrimati Radharani is the crest jewel of that Rasa, Vipralamba Rasa. And she is called Krishna Mai. Why Krishna Mai? Krishna Jar Bhitare Bahire. The purport of the word Krishna Mai, Kaviraj Goswami says, krishna mai means she has krishna within her and without her she only sees krishna everywhere jaha jaha netra pade taha krishna sphure that's kaviraj goswami says what is krishna mai means wherever her eyes go she only sees krishna and that's the purport of vipralamba rasa also meaning the devotees who are in the vipralamba rasa wherever they see wherever they cast their eyes they only see the lotus face of krishna krishna jar bhitare bahire whenever the eyes are open the devotee is seeing krishna in everything and in everyone and when the eyes are closed the devotee is embracing krishna within his heart so that's vipra number rasa so baba ji maharaj would travel all the different pastimes of radha krishna in vrindavan and especially in the mood of separation he would cry tears and always chant a bhajan calling out shri radha and krishna his most favorite bhajan was he would chant ko thai ga prem mai radhe 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 ga jay radhe radhe देख दिया प्राण रखो राधे राधे तो मार कंगाल तो माय दाके राधे राधे वृंदावन विलासिनी राधे राधे कनु मन मोहिनी राधे राधे अष्ट सखीर शिरोमणि राधे राधे वृषभानु नंदिनी राधे राधे he would constantly shed tears of separation from radha and krishna in vrindavan so he spent 30 years doing such bhajan and in the year 1893 when bhakti vinod thakur discovered the birthplace of chaitanya mahaprabhu the yoga peetha the news spread all over india especially in vrindavan and the important holy places that the birthplace of lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has been discovered by bhakti vinod thakur and all the great vaishnavas came they wanted to see him so along with all such vaishnavas our baba ji maharaj also came to vrindavan from vrindavan he came to navadvip there he met his param guru jagannath das baba ji maharaj and then that time jagannath das baba ji maharaj said how is your bhajan going on what is happening with you so param guru is asking his a uh, grand disciple what's going on with the bhajan and then he said that i don't have any taste for chanting even though he was chanting three lakh names of krishna he said i don't have any taste i want to intensify my bhajan that was his mood and that should be the mood of all the vaishnavas 
always want to better their chanting. So that time Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj gave the instruction to Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj that you stay in Navadvip because in the age of Kali especially, whoever will worship and chant the holy names of Gauranga in Navadvip, that person will very easily attain the love of Krishna. So it's very easy process, you stay here. And that time he had intense separation from Vrindavan but he still followed that instruction. He took a Kshetra Sanyas that he didn't want to leave Navadvip Dham anymore. So he stayed in Navadvip and the way he stayed will define his characteristic as Sakshat Vairagya Murte. He was living off on an overturned boat on the banks of the Ganges. So he would sit on the overturned boat. He would sit there and chant all day, all night. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. He would eat only the mud from the Ganges and sometimes he would do some madhukari. He would eat some parched rice, wash it in the Ganges water and eat. And sometimes he would just fast. Especially on the Ekadasi days he would not drink or eat anything at all. So he was very austere personality and his fame was spreading all over Navadvip. And you know how he would chant? He would get you know how he covered his body he got some discarded cloth from crematorium and also from such cloth he tied 108 knots he made a japa bead and he would chant on that, those so that that was his austere uh, personality one time one person gave him a shawl thinking that babaji must be feeling cold in the winter days but babaji maharaj he put that shawl he uh, put two sticks on top of the boat and he hanged that shawl up, um, uh, you know, with the two sticks just like a shade. The person came back and he said that oh this is such a costly shawl I gave you and you just put it on top. Babaji Maharaj said that your costly shawl is giving me warmth even from such a distance. One person gave him a very nice blanket and he put it on but he started feeling a little sleepy. And he was like, no, 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 this is ridiculous. I don't want my bhajan, my remembrance of Krishna, chanting of Krishna's names to be affected. So he put that blanket on top of a hut. The person asked that why the blanket is so far away? I gave it to cover your body. He said this blanket is so warm that even from such a distance, I am getting the warmth. And sometimes if I need to warm up myself, I go and put my hands on it and I come back and I chant and that's enough for me. So that was his, how austere he was. That's why he's called Sakshat Vairagya Murta. So Babaji Maharaj was constantly chanting and remembering Lord Krishna always. If anybody would come and touch his feet, he would say, Satya Nas Ho Gaya Tera. Means he would say, that now your life is doomed. You touched my feet, that means your life is finished. And the person will be scared. Oh, like, is it a blessing or is it a curse? But what he meant is now your material life is finished. So that was the internal meaning given by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj. But he would say that now you are doomed. He would not let anyone touch his lotus feet. But many people would come and say that, oh, give us some blessing, give us some mercy. Baba, Babaji, please give us mercy. You are pure Vaishnava. But he would say, okay, you want my mercy? Okay, put one kutir. Let's build you a small hut. You also sit here and chant. Forget about all your material business and be and live with me. That is my mercy. So that, was the, that is the blessing I can give you. So that was his blessing. In this regard, our dear Srila Prabhupada also one time when he was traveling uh, with his disciples in a train in India, that time one materialistic person 
he looked at prabhupad he looked so effulgent and he was attracted to shri prabhupad and he asked our shri prabhupad that prabhupad give me some blessing swami ji give me some blessing and prabhupad sensed that he just wants some material benediction he is not interested in bhakti so shri prabhupad said do you see all these people with me they are all my disciples and they have gotten my blessing and if you get uh, my blessing you will also become like them so he this person looked around and he saw all the shaved up sanyasis and all the shaved up uh, prabhus and mataji and like he got scared and he said it's okay swami ji maybe next time so shri prabhupad could sense that in the name of blessing all those people wanted was some material benediction just wanted some uh, sense gratification our gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj he would sit in his hut and only chant hare krishna maha mantra all day all night and he would not get anything for himself to eat one time one person had given him some mahaprasad of gauranga mahaprabhu and it was a kheer that he put in a pot in his little hut or some people built him a small little hut of uh, dry grass and all the discarded tree material so he was sometimes sit in the hut and one day there was a kheer in the pot and some ants were coming in that so he decided to hang that pot from the rooftop from a rope so the the spot was hanging and so that it will be protected from the ants so the ants did not come but a snake came snake climbed and he came from the top and he was about to enter that pot one lady was passing by and she saw that there is a snake in that hut and what is happening here there she immediately came inside the hut and she started screaming oh baba ji look there is a snake there is a snake that is about to enter your prasadam and if you eat that you will die it's poisonous snake that time gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj was very calm and stern he said you leave this place at once don't worry about it she said but i am talking to you i am giving you my affection because i care i am telling you this so baba ji maharaj said that it is better for me to die from the poison of this poisonous snake than to receive you know poisonous affection from a personality like you he could sense some lust he could sense some material so called affection coming from a woman so he said i don't want such affection so called and because he would never meet any lady any woman in seclusion he never ever in his life met any uh, woman in seclusion he always had some disciple some other uh, devotees ar- around him so he was very strict about the principle of being a strict brahmachari a b- being strict celibate and he would tell all his disciples all the um, uh, devotees that would gather around he would give instruction that if you want to cross the material ocean then you have to listen to this do not associate with women loosely do not associate with those who associate with women loosely and do not associate with those who associate with those who associate with women loosely so be very strict about that <clears throat> in shrimad bhagavatam also <clears throat> it is mentioned mahat sevam dwaram ahur vimukte tamo dwaram yoshitam sangi sangah so shrimad bhagavatam also very nicely describes that the doors of liberation will open very easily for the person who serves the great mahabhagavatas mahat sevam if you serve a great vaishnava then the doors of liberation will open very easily 
and if you want to open the doors of the gates of hell then yoshitam sangi sangaha then if you associate with the woman or if women associate loosely with men it goes in both the directions it it basically means do not associate with opposite sex loosely shrimad bhagavatam also describes very beautifully so in navadvip dham when gaurkishor das baba ji would be chanting and associating with the devotees there our bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj who back then was vimal prasad he also started to come and associate with gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj would come and sit in the assembly where bhakti vinod thakur would speak on uh, chaitanya shikshamrit and bhakti vinod thakur would very eloquently and very nicely describe the teachings of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj would sit in the back and just his presence would attract everyone even bhakti vinod thakur he also understood that this personality is not a uh, uh, an ordinary personality he is a great mahabhagavat vaishnava and sometimes he would chant the this bhajan kothai kothai garadhe kothai kothai he would chant oh my dear shrimati radha rani where are you and kanu mana mohini radhe radhe he would say oh my dear shrimati radha rani you are the enchantress of the mind of krishna who enchants the entire creation so how great you are and i am deeply weeping in separation from you and when such beautiful bhajans would be sung from the lotus mouth of gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj vimal prasad he would be listening and he completely got enchanted by gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj he was so attracted by him and seeing his love for radha and krishna seeing how much deeply in love he is our vimal prasad he was very much he was firm in his heart that he wanted to take initiation from gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj but gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj had a bad experience of a disciple in the past there was one disciple who him he gave some nice instructions who could not contain who could not follow and had run away so gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj had decided that i am not accepting any disciples there is no one qualified all are you know rascals and mlechas so i am not going to accept any foolish personality in my life anymore now here vimal prasad he was completely attracted and attached to gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj and bhakti vinod thakur the father of vimal prasad he also said that if you wish to take initiation then the best candidate is gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj so vimal prasad bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj who was he if you are not aware of the background of bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj he was a great scholar to an extent we cannot even imagine at the age of 7 he was proof reading and helping his father in jaiva dharma book he was proof reading at the age of 7 at the age of 11 he wrote the commentary on the most difficult book in sanskrit it's called surya siddhanta he wrote the commentary at the age of 11 that book is so complex that many people don't even want to touch it it's based on astrology at the age of 15 vimal prasad he was given a chair of honor from the university of kolkata for the uh, department of philosophy physics astronomy and they said that oh my dear vimal prasad you come any time you want this chair is reserved for you it's your lifetime you are on this post you are the cha- you are the the main guest of honor the chair of honor that you can come any time you can take classes whenever you want you can walk in and we will be honored so that was the caliber of vimal prasad and such a great scholar he was you know with folded hands he was begging for initiation from gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj and gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj said that oh you are so qualified 
you are the great vimal prasad the son of the great bhakti vinod thakur who is famous all over why are you here go and find the right guru who would give you the right instruction and show you the right path go he said i'm not taking you and vimal prasad was bewildered what should i do now and then vimal prasad said that but i have accepted him as spiritual master now i cannot go anywhere else now my heart is married my heart is connected with him forever so the next day vimal prasad came again begging for initiation he was falling at the feet of gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj and said that i if i take initiation i just want to take it from you please accept me i have read so many books actually i have read so many libraries he said that we read books but bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur bimal prasad he would read libraries he would while talking to his friends he would say oh have you read this library oh have you read that library so he would completely by heart and read the libraries so he said that i have read all the vedas all the puranas i have read all the upanishads all the samhitas all the history and i have read so many books on astronomy and so much of knowledge that i have is just like the water of the ocean it cannot quench my thirst please you have to give me the mercy and give me the drop of krishna prem just give me one drop of that krishna prem that will quench my thirst and he started crying weeping the tears and that time baba ji maharaj said that i told you you cannot be taking initiation from some illiterate person like me you are very qualified so go i don't want to give initiation when he said please please baba ji please give me the initiation i cannot go anywhere he said okay i will ask krishna i will ask mahaprabhu and i'll tell you later go so he came again next day he said oh did you get a chance to ask mahaprabhu what did he say oh oh i forgot go i don't want to give initiation and then he came again next day oh did you did you get a chance to talk to mahaprabhu are you ready for initiation he said no 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 you are coming from an aristocratic family you are very scholarly and you are handsome so all these are the disqualifications for initiation so you have been disqualified go so he was like oh so again he came back after a few days and he was rolling on the dust of gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj and crying and weeping he said please give me the initiation because without taking initiation from you i will commit suicide i will drown myself in the ganges and then baba ji maharaj said okay i'll think about it you go right now and then bhakti vinod thakur also came and talked to uh, baba ji maharaj he said that oh my son is very nice you know i i also recommend him so that time gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj said that i know i know of course i know that he is your son and he is very qualified but i feel not qualified so when bhakti vinod thakur also recommended and bimal prasad was so insistent and he threatened that i am going to give up my life so finally there was one time when bimal prasad came and he said that i am not leaving you anymore i am just going to sit here and chant until i die that time baba ji maharaj said do you want initiation you want initiation here so he took his hand and he rubbed it on his lotus feet and he sprinkled the dust he threw it at the in the direction of vimal prasad he said here and then those when the all the particles from the the dust of the lotus feet of a vaishnava bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur maharaj he writes that when those particles were approaching me i could see them in slow motion and i felt floating in the spiritual reality and i felt that that moment my entire material consciousness was destroyed so that baba ji maharaj gaur ki shodas baba ji maharaj he would never give anyone uh, his dust he would never let anyone touch his lotus feet he personally gave 
and sprinkled on him. And he said, go take bath. I will initiate you right now. So when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj Vimal Prasad heard, he immediately ran to the river. And he took immediately bath. He came back. And that time, our Gaur Kishordas Babaji Maharaj gave Gayatri Mantra to uh, Bimal Prasad. And he said, so your initiated name is Shri Varsha Bhanavi Devi Daita Das. So that was the initiation name given by Gaur Kishordas Babaji Maharaj to Bimal Prasad. The meaning of the name is Shri Varsha Bhanavi Devi. Who is that? Radharani, because she is the daughter of Vrishabhanu. So, Vrishabhanu's daughter, Varshabhanavi, Devi, Daita, means the one who is very dear servant of Srimati Radharani. So, Gaur Kishordas Babaji Maharaj gave initiation and he uh, gave that name and he gave him instructions also. And after that, we see that complete transformation in the life of Vimal Prasad. Now watch Bhanavi Devi Daita Das. He started intensifying his Krishna consciousness and he also wanted to preach. He started to systematically uh, devise plans to preach Krishna consciousness throughout the world. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj, sometimes people would come and say, that, Oh, you are so scholarly. And you have taken initiation from who? Babaji Maharaj, Gaurki Shuddhas Babaji Maharaj. He doesn't even know how to sign his name. That time Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj would furiously say that who says he doesn't know how to sign? I am his signature. So Bimal Prasad, Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj, he would always say very nice things about Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj. He also one time said that if Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj would give his entire time out of his one day, if he is doing 23 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds for Krishna and if he is keeping one second for himself, I would not have taken initiation from him. But I know my dear Guru Maharaj, he is completely engrossed, completely attached and he is serving Krishna, remembering Krishna all throughout the day, 24 hours. So he would always say like this about his Guru Maharaj. One time what happened is our uh, Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj while residing on the banks of the Ganges, he would encounter so many people who would come and he said like, oh, give us some blessing, give, give us some you know, benediction, give us your mercy. So one time he got really fed up and he came to public lavatories. He came in the public restrooms and he locked himself and he started chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And all the people were bewildered that, oh, Babaji Maharaj is now living in the public toilets. And then some government officials came and they knocked on the door. Oh, Babaji Maharaj, come out. We will build a nice kutir for you with lock. We will build you nice everything. Just come out. We cannot see you living in the public toilet. Because it's so stinky. Babaji Maharaj from inside replied that the stink of this public toilet is better than the stink of the material consciousness of those materialistic people who come and beg me for blessings. So he was living there and he was chanting and performing his bhajan all day, all night in a public restroom, public uh, toilet. So everybody was thinking how to take him out. That time, that time, one 17 year old boy whose name was Vinod Bihari, he came to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj and he was telling that I want to get your mercy. He was telling to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj. But that time Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj said, if you want my mercy, you have to go and meet my Guru Maharaj. You go and see him. He is living in Navadvi. So he went and he found out that he is in, he's locked himself in the public toilet. 
So he came back and told that, oh, dear Maharaj, I cannot meet him because he's inside. Then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasi Thakur Maharaj said that, don't worry, I know the password for that door. So you go and shout that, oh, Babaji Maharaj, we come from your dear Shri Varshabhanavi Devi Daita Prabhu. We come from the mercy of Varshabhanavi Devi Daita Prabhu. And when Gaurki Shodas Babaji heard that name, he immediately opened the door, grabbed the person, Vinod Bihari, inside, and he locked it again. So, at least Vinod Bihari Prabhu, he was thinking, okay, I at least got the darshan of Babaji Maharaj. And then in the public toilet, Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj gave so many nice instructions to Vinod Bihari Prabhu, who later on becomes Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, who gave sannyas initiation to our Srila Prabhupada. So that's a nice connection. And that time when Vinod Bihari Prabhu was leaving, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj embraced him. And he said that this embrace will give you the strength to serve my Prabhu. Because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj would call Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj Amar Prabhu, my master. And it's fine. But the, the funny thing and the interesting thing is that Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj would also call Bhakti Siddhan Sarudhi Thakur Amar Prabhu. So he would say that, okay, this embrace will protect you when you will serve Amar Prabhu. So that was the loving relationship that they had. And when Vinod Bihari, later on we see that when he was serving Bhakti Siddhan Sarudhi Thakur Maharaj, there used to be a lot of attacks on Bhakti Siddhan Sarudhi on his life. Because he was a fierce preacher. He was a lion, Singha Guru. And he would smash the Karmakandi Brahmanas. He would smash the atheistic people. Or even those days, the, the English, they were also after him. So, so many people were envious of the growing popularity of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Maharaj. But that time, the Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, he would protect him by disguising himself as Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Maharaj. Because they had the similar height and they both were skinny and they would look uh, similar. So in such times, he would dress up like Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Maharaj and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Maharaj would dress up like him, like a grehasta. He would wear on white clothes and he would go. And because of the uh, request from the disciples. So, uh, our Shri Prabhupada also many a times, he also mentions how Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj would very proudly and very uh, uh, seriously talk about Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj and tell about his instructions and his strictness that even one time that one, a few people came to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj and he, they wanted to know about cleanliness. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj said, if you want to know about cleanliness, you go and meet Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. So they were like, okay. The, when they went, they saw that he's living in a public toilet. And that time, he, when they went and they associated with Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, they came back and reported to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj. And they said that your Guru Maharaj, this Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, he is pure within and without. And wherever he sits and does his bhajan, that place becomes a spiritual atmosphere. It becomes like a spiritual bubble. And whoever goes there and um, associates with your Guru Maharaj, that person, he gets cleansed from within and without. So even though externally Babaji Maharaj was not very keen on being you know, at the clean place or being on a, you know, like wearing all the clean, nice clothes, but he was clean from within and without because he was constantly chanting the holy names of Krishna. 
and he was very critical of all the other babajis who were in the name of religion or in the name of krishna bhakti they would do all kind of nonsense one time one person came to gaurkishor das babaji maharaj and said that babaji maharaj i am starting one bhagavat saptah i am going to speak for 7 days and i want your mercy so that time gaurkishor das babaji maharaj said you want my mercy you have to follow three things he said okay i will follow he said first you, whatever affair that you are having with that lady stop that immediately and he is like how does he know even my wife doesn't know and this baba ji is too much so what is the second thing second thing he says that you have a menu card of bhagavatam i know that you whenever someone asks requests you for bhagavat katha you have a menu card meaning only katha you have to pay this many thousand rupees and if you want katha plus kirtan then more money if you want katha and kirtan and nice vyasasan and little dancing more money so you charge money for bhagavat you will go to hell so you have to stop your menu card business and you all that money you are using for your sense gratification so this must stop immediately so that was the second thing and the third thing he said that when you do katha you have to speak bhagavat as it is without any adulteration without adding any th- nonsense without uh, polluting it without watering it down so there was a lot of babajis those days who would do nonsense but at the same time they would live in the garb of babajis and a lot of times some you know babaji would be found that oh he did this he did that so being fed up of such people one time gaurkishor das babaji maharaj actually wore silken clothes nice silk clothes and everybody is like is that the gaurkishor das babaji we know or is that someone else so when everybody asked him that what happened babaji maharaj what happened to your uh, f- usual you know vaish babaji vaish so he said that all these rascals who are doing nonsense in the garb of baba ji you know just to show them that i am not from their category i have decided to wear silken clothes so when these words were heard by the other people they they got the message and they felt really bad that our dear gaur kishor das baba ji who was really highly respected in baba ji communities so they understood that oh we should never do that so for a few days he was even wearing those clothes just to say that okay you have to you must stop this nonsense so especially there was one person one baba ji who was pretending to be very ecstatic he was faking the ecstatic symptoms of krishna prem just to attract the followers especially he would start chanting hare krishna hare krishna and he would while chanting he would start laughing he would start rolling on the floor and he would start making weird noises and started shaking and pretending that i am having so much ecstasy and then one time gaur kishor das baba ji he was having a hari naam kirtan and they were doing sankirtan on the streets and when the sankirtan party was going this person did not care to join this person kept on doing his oh krishna oh krishna and he started crying and he kept on with his nonsense and that time gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj said that he is a rascal he is a pretender he is not a real baba ji if he was a real baba ji he would join the sankirtan he would come associate with devotees but all he cares is his followers all he cares is how to get more money out of these followers and when all the people all the other people and the baba ji they heard about him then everyone stopped associating with him because the words of gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj were very much respected if gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj says that this person is a rascal that's it no more that was the uh, power that was the weight of his words even in atlanta temple one time when our shrill prabhupad 
was here. One person was coming in the temple in Atlanta and he would, in the middle of Harinam, when the Kirtan is going on, he would start rolling on the floor and started screaming and making a big drama and big scene. So the devotees wrote a letter to Shri Prabhupada. Well, Shri Prabhupada, there is one such person who is dance, while dancing, he is going crazy, screaming and rolling on the floor and we have to stop Kirtan just because of his disturbance. So Shri Prabhupada replied, he said that next time he comes, keep one stick ready. And then devotees kept one stick ready. And Shri Prabhupada said that when he starts doing his nonsense business, give him some, you know, spanks with the stick. And devotees actually gave him little spanks when he started doing his nonsense, uh, fooling around with the ecstasy and uh, faking it. And Shri Prabhupada said in the letter that if he, while getting those, uh, getting beaten by the stick, if he still continues chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, then he is a real devotee. But instead of Hare Krishna, if he starts cursing and screaming or, you know, giving you bad words, that means he's a pretender. So the devotees also tried that out and the person, he started cursing and he started screaming and instead of Hare Krishna, he started like, oh, mommy, oh, daddy, oh, you know, he was started like, oh, save me. What the hell wrong with you guys? Like that. So, Sri Prabhupada also did the same technique as Gaur Das Babaji Maharaj. Now, we will just uh, finish with his uh, little condensed teachings uh, of Gaur Das Babaji Maharaj. The essence of his teachings. There was one time a newly married couple came to see Gaur Das Babaji Maharaj and they asked for some advice. And that time Gaur Das Babaji Maharaj said to the newly married couple, you know, how Grihastha should behave. So his standard is very high. So what he says is, you have to follow three things. What are the three things? He told the wife that as a wife, you have to support and help your husband in all his good endeavors. You have to support him in his Hari Bhajan and you have to support in all his devotional activities. By this, you will get 50% of the credit. That's the first thing he said. Second thing he told to the husband that you should not treat your wife with um, thinking that, you know, being pompous, I am the man or I am the husband and you must serve me, you are my maid servant. He said that a Vaishnava wife is extremely rare and difficult to find in this world. If one has the good fortune of having one, he should see it as a benediction from Krishna. The wife worships the husband as her lord and master. Similarly, the husband should also respect the wife because she is Krishna Dasi, a servant of Krishna. In this way, the husband can protect his devotional enthusiasm by not considering his wife to be his maid servant, but she is always the maid servant of Krishna. So he told the husband that you should let your wife eat first and you should eat the remnants. And the third thing he said, that he, third thing he told the wife, that if he comes and tries to touch you to, for sense gratification, you should take a stick and beat him if he wants to touch you for sense gratification. So that was his instruction for all the grihasthas. And he focused on only Krishna consciousness. He said that grihastha life is a boat that, that will take you to Krishna directly. But if on the boat, if you do nonsense, then you will be kicked out of that boat and you will be thrown back in the ocean of material miseries. So the essence of Babaji Maharaj's teachings can be summarized as the divine name of Krishna offers the one and only shelter. One should never try to remember Radha, Damodar 
transcendental pastimes by artificial methods constant chanting of the divine names will purify the heart by chanting hari naam the syllables of the maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare the syllables of the maha mantra will gradually reveal the spiritual form qualities past times of shri krishna then you will realize your own eternal spiritual form service and the 11 particulars of your spiritual identity you will reveal you will be revealed your swarup avastha just by chanting the holy names that's the essence of his teaching that's that's what he would say to all the people who would come and seek his blessing so on this very auspicious day of disappearance of shri la gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj we should all try to take his teachings to heart and imbibe those teachings in our life and under the guidance of shri la prabhupad because bhakti siddhant sarosh thakur maharaj said that i am the signature of my guru maharaj Similarly we can see that our Sri Lal Prabhupada is also signature of Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Goswami Maharaj and through this parampara through this gaudiya tradition which is so pure that it offers nothing else but the supreme most object of spiritual realizations that is Krishna prem so we don't get anything else in this beautiful gaudiya vaishnav parampara so if we follow these teachings very seriously then we will definitely get krishna prem in this very life shil prabhupad ki jai gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj ki jai gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj stiro bhav divas ki jai don't go to kolkata yeah he gave him a message do not go to kolkata please don't make any disturbance but he didn't follow three interstitial gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj he Uh, particularly gave uh, instructions to bhakti siddhant sarosh thakur maharaj because he himself followed those he had kshetra sanyas that he decided that i will never leave navadweep there is a past time that he was very sick one time he was very very sick and all the baba ji and all the personalities in navadweep they were concerned that baba ji is he going to make it so they wanted to take him to kolkata because kolkata is a bigger city and more facilities you know for medication better doctors that time gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj said that it's better for me to die in navadweep than to see the faces of those rascal sense gratifier doctors i don't want to go out of navadweep and that was a big dilemma so bhakti vinod thakur he himself went to kolkata he got the medicine he got everything and he had to go to and fro and then he brought the medicine for gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj but he never left navadweep that was his kshetra sanya and that's the same instruction he gave to bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj that stay in navadweep and don't go out of dhama and he also gave the instruction that do not make disciples but bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj he we know that he made so many disciples that he is the in our tradition he accepted ladies he accepted women as his disciples he accepted so many devotees as his disciples and he traveled so much that there was times that when bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj would travel in the train it was confirmed that the train is not going to the destination on time because while go while the train is going it would be stopped 
in the so many places by the government officials big big aristocratic people would stop the train just knowing that oh bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur is traveling in that train stop it right here and they would go and take darshan so that train never reached destination on time and what is the third one don't build any temples don't build any temples huh? <laughs> and uh, the anand kirtan prabhu is saying third one that he gave instruction was don't build any temples because there he is his his understanding we have to understand that he saw the holy dham as chintamani while being in vrindavan he would offer obeisances to even ants he would see the ants in vrindavan and he would remember that oh they are the eternal associates of krishna and radha and he would bow down to ants he would bow down to birds animals trees and all the brajabasi and then in navadweep he saw that there was one time one person who was uh, building roads and for building roads he was cutting the trees and he came to take darshan of baba ji maharaj and first thing that he heard is you rascal how dare you touch the trees of navadweep dham because these are not normal trees these are chintamani trees you are cutting the chintamani trees so he was very strict he stopped it immediately he told him you cannot cut any tree in navadweep there was one person who was a big lawyer who bought some land in navadweep and he wanted to build like a restaurant or something and baba ji maharaj said you rascal do you think you can take uh, the land of navadweep you cannot all the wealth in the entire creation cannot buy an inch from the spiritual world from navadweep dham so he was very strict about that and he said no don't build temples because he his idea was everybody should reside in navadweep dham but bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj he <coughs> has a great uh, broader vision bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj he is also one manjari and gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj is also guna manjari so they have come to the material world not just to do bhajan because they are already nitya siddhas they have come to the material world anugrahaya so give the distribute the mercy of krishna to all the fallen conditioned souls anugrahaya charanti nunam bhutani bhavyani janardanasya the great souls come to this material world and they walk on the surface of earth just to distribute the mercy of krishna now bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj he has that vision and he respected his guru maharaj always but he immediately went to kolkata because it's a bigger city and then he started building temples he built 108 64 mathas he built and then he had so many disciples and there was such a connection between gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj and bhakti siddhant sarve thakur that gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj would say that amar prabhu he is the eternal associate of gauranga so whatever he does he is very smart so it was there was no conflict as such so the instruction was given in loving mood and bhakti siddhant sarve thakur maharaj he understood that the import of the instruction the import of the instruction that my guru maharaj ultimately wants is ultimately his desire is to preach and deliver all conditioned souls so even though he said don't leave dham he meant in your heart always reside at radha kund in your heart never leave dham so bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur maharaj he obeyed that instruction but physically and externally he did not and similarly he said that don't build any temples meaning people build temple and they say that oh i built this temple i built that temple oh this is my matha meaning that there comes a, um, a sense of ownership so bhakti siddhant sarve thakur maharaj he started the the managerial system like we have gbc where he did not keep it anything on his name he he was not the owner and the third one he said don't make disciples meaning <coughs> that 
don't think that you are a guru and you are the deliverer of anyone in the heart of hearts we should remember that all are all the living entities they ultimately belong to krishna and krishna is param guru and krishna is the ultimate shelter and he is the one who is delivering everyone so he understood the in- internal meaning of the instructions so he followed the internal meaning of the instructions and in that says he followed the instruction and at the same time externally it appears he did not so that's both you want to speak anything else? Why was he? Okay. Anand, Anand Kirtan Prabhu is saying that why Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj is seen as Bhajananandi and uh, Bhakti Siddhan Saradhi Thakur Maharaj is seen as Goshtanandi <clears throat> and that's it, right? Or? See, I'll... when the great vaishnavas come in this world they come with their mood and they come with their uh, rasa so sometimes a devotee a, a nitya siddha devotee he may not um, show the symptoms of you know being a great preacher they may be very simple as well because the characteristic of uttam adhikari devotee so there is kanishta adhikaris who are neophytes who only have some little attraction for krishna's deity form but they do not have attraction for the vaishnavas the devotees of krishna the madhyam adhikaris they are considered as the real sales person of krishna they are very smart madhyam adhikaris actually shri prabhupada says that if we become madhyam adhikaris in our movement then we can deliver the entire world if all our members become madhyam adhikaris why become madhyam adhikaris have the distinction they have love for krishna they have uh, love for the vaishnavas they have mercy for all the fallen conditioned souls and they have a stern attitude for the pretenders or the the people who are envious of vaishnavas so madhyam adhikari platform is where one can preach one cannot preach on the uttam adhikari platform why because on the uttam adhikari platform the characteristic of uttam bhakta is that he sees everyone as pure devotee he sees everybody as a spiritual master so who is he going to preach just like we we just talked about how gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj he would even see the ants in vrindavan and he would jump and offer obeisances even to the ants so where is the question of preaching so uttam adhikaris they do not preach but how come then bhakti siddhant sarodh thakur maharaj and bhakti vedant jagat guru shil prabhupad how come our prabhupad and bhakti siddhant sarodh thakur maharaj they are such great preachers because sometimes the nitya siddha devotees who have come in this material world with a specific mission and the mission is to preach krishna consciousness all over the world they come down from the platform of uttam adhikari uttam bhakta to the platform of madhyam adhikari so even though shri prabhupad he is uttam adhikari is nitya siddha devotee but just out of compassion for all the fallen conditioned souls they come down to the platform of madhyam adhikari where they can see things as they are tatvadarshi they can even chastise the personalities who are doing wrong things they can accept disciples because when you accept disciples you have to chastise them you have to correct them so you have to see them as subordinate 
so that's that's the platform of madhyam adhikari so only madhyam adhikaris can technically preach krishna consciousness so gaur kishore das baba ji maharaj has this mood of bhajananandi because he never came down from the platform of uttam adhikari and that's what bhakti siddhant sarve thakur maharaj also said that my guru maharaj he is a uttam adhikari and he never came down he doesn't want to come down of that platform he doesn't care about the material world and he doesn't want to mingle with it he is the great avadhuta that's why we began with the discussion of avadhuta avadhuta category itself means that they do not want to mingle with the external energy of krishna in any way in any any way possible so that's that's why he is bhajananandi because he is avadhuta category that's why he is avadhuta category so avadhuta category devotees they do not uh, come down to the platform and on the other hand we see bhakti siddhant sarve thakur maharaj he is goshtanandi because he is a great preacher and out of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls he is uttam adhikari greatest of the devotees nitya siddha but he is coming down to the platform madhyam adhikar he is coming to the madhyam adhikar so that he can preach so that's why he is goshtanandi thank you um but i'm hearing a little contradiction because you know you s- yeah, i have a microphone i'm talking into a microphone um so you're saying how bhakti siddhanta said about his spiritual master goka showed us babaji maharaj that he, he didn't come down from the uttama adhikar platform but during the the body of your talk you were giving different examples of how he was instructing people maybe he not on a large scale mm-hmm. but definitely i was hearing different instances of you know him instructing this grihastha couple and this one and that one criticizing the other babajis so that's that's majam adhikari work right mm. so how do we understand okay this that's a very nice question so when some other people came and approached gaurkishor das babaji maharaj for instructions he would say that build a kutir next to me be my neighbor and chant hari krishna maha mantra with me don't go back there was one physician there was one doctor who started a free clinic in nabadweep and free of cost and he came and sat down at the feet of baba ji maharaj so gaurkishor das baba ji maharaj said that what is this nonsense philanthropy work you have started this is nonsense you will be curing the bodies of those sense enjoyers so you are curing some people you are doing a philanthropic activity but when they will be cured they will go back to sense gratification so what's the use of that rather sit here sit here and chant with me all day all night so he would chant 192 rounds of hare krishna maha mantra every day and just if you are wondering that means 12 times 16 rounds so when we chant 16 rounds we are like ah oh, we're done finally 16 now so he would chant 12 times what we get fatigued in only 16 rounds he would chant that much so the point is his only instruction was simple sit here chant hari krishna maha mantra don't worry about any philanthropic work don't worry about material business these things will come and go material world is temporary if you mingle with it you are going to be attached and then you will be doomed so that was the only instruction he, he would not give a bhagavatam class and externally he was illiterate also so that is his leela also that he is bhajananandi and he is if he was very learned if that was his leela then he would give big big classes and you know but he was a simple vaishnava and he just wanted to remain a very simple baba ji and he all he gave instruction was just don't mingle with anything with external energy chant hari krishna that's it okay you sham murari prabhu thank you for a nice class correct me if i'm wrong did did he not try to avoid giving instruction as much as he could i remember no. one past time where some a couple came to him for blessings and he said 
if you pass stool in front of me, then I'll give you blessings. <laughs> and they couldn't master up the courage to do it because it's disrespectful. So did he, uh, is, it, is it a noticeable yeah. point to mention that, yeah. that he tried to avoid giving instruction as much as he could? Yeah, that's true. Because he, the, the point is the same, that he would not come down from Uttam Adhikari platform. He did not want to give instruction. And only thing he said, chant Hare Krishna, that's it. And he would say that don't be attached to bhojana. Because if you eat a lot and sumptuously, or if you eat without knowing the source of the food, then your bhojana will spoil your bhajana. So that was his little instruction. So he would give all the simple instructions for simple hearted people and being on the platform with the Madhikari. So we're honoring Gorakishwara Dasbhavi Maharaj. Certainly he's in a unique position. The instructions exactly. can be hardly understood. Yeah. So I just want to make, a, you make one point in which when he was in the latrine, and that snake was coming out and the lady came inside and he pointed out, she pointed out that, you know, I came here for affection, but Maharaj rejected that, that he would rather die or take poisons from that snake than from the <laughs> affection of women. Mm. So now my, I'm making this, uh, how do you say? It's a recollection that I have that sometimes devotees prematurely hear this and neophyte devotees and they might misuse that quote. So what advice can you say to those devotees to honor what Srila Koreksura Maharaj is saying but at the same time to be, not to be rude or fanatically mistreat, especially the Vaishnavis or females mm. who are also mm. devotees of Krishna. Mm. Because that happens a lot. Yeah. I'm saying neophyte, yeah, that's beginners. Right. Yeah. So to make the, your, your advice. See, in detail, what we can see is from Chaitanya Charita Amrit, let's focus on the pastime of Chota Haridas. Chota Haridas Thakur was in the garb of sannyasi. He was wearing sannyasi clothes. And he saw one lady lustfully. He only saw her with lust. You know, and that's it. He did not approach her or he did not flirt or he did not do something to seduce her, nothing. He only saw a woman with lust. As soon as he came back, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejected him. He said that no more, like you are rejected from the service. If you see the entire Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is most merciful. There can be no one more merciful than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, why such most munificent, most magnanimous personality, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is rejecting Chota Haridas, which never happened. In the past, there was Kal Krishna Das. Kal Krishna Das traveled with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he got affected by Bhattahari women. They were prostitutes. He associated with them. He had association with those women. He literally fell down. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejected him, but Nityanand Prabhu, he gave him service. Nityanand Prabhu gave him the service that you go to Bengal and give all the news from Jagannath Puri to devotees of Bengal. That's your service now. So he was not rejected. He was, in one sense, Nityanand Prabhu, he still kept him. Even though he associated with women. Now here, the case of Chota Haridas Thakur, he has not associated with that lady. He only saw her with lust. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is being so strict. Why? So, there are so many commentaries on this one incident. And Kaviraj Goswami, he concludes the chapter of Chota Haridas that if you want to accept Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as your heart, your Lord and Master, 
If you want to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then learn from Chota Haridas Thakur and avoid association with women. Woman means opposite sex. Because see, most of our Vaishnavas, they are in the body of a male. So that's why they say avoid association of women. Idea is, women should also avoid the loosely uh, free mixing of, you know, with men. So it goes in both ways. Why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so strict? Because that's where the external energy, Maya, enters. That's the biggest weapon of Maya. The biggest weapon of external energy, the strongest of the shackle of Maya is the attraction between man and woman. When one breaks that shackle, then Krishna consciousness attaining mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, attaining mercy of Radha Krishna, it becomes very easy because that's the strongest shackle, that's the strongest attachment. So that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he rejected Chota Haridas to the point that he committed suicide. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is like, no more. Why? Because he is wearing a sannyasi grove. He is wearing the garb of sannyasi. And then he is pretending and he is having these um, sexual thoughts or lustful ideas. So that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was strict because he doesn't like pretenders. The point is about pretension. If Chota Haridas Thakur properly marries that lady and he lives as a Grihastha, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will give mercy profusely. Because actually in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's all pastimes, 90%, 95% of his devotees, followers are Grihasthas. They are all Grihasthas, Grihastha couples. So what really affects or what really uh, stops us from getting the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to be pretender. Is to pretend to be someone you are not. So don't be a pretender. That's the point. And Babaji Maharaj, Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj, he would always uh, restrict his uh, devotees from loosely associating with women because those days that was the that was becoming the degraded culture of the Babajis. Because when Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj left the body, what happened? So many Babajis came and they said, He is mine. This body is mine. Why? Because Babaji belonged to us. He is ours. And Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Maharaj came and he said that, How are you claiming that he is yours? I am his only disciple and he is mine. So there was this conflict because these Babajis wanted to even make money off his dead body. Why? Because they thought we are going to build a nice samadhi. So many people will come. So much money, money, money. Money is honey. So let's make money even off his dead body. But Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Maharaj was a, like a lion. He said, Right now, you want the body of Babaji Maharaj? Anyone who has not associated with a low class woman loosely for last one year, come and take this body. That was his lion, like he roared in the assembly. And the craziest part is nobody came. Everybody started looking here and there. Nobody could even see in the eyes of Saraswati Thakur because they were all like associating with prostitutes or pretending to be Babaji's but they were having their affairs. So that's why he was so strict. Nobody came. Then he said, okay, anyone who has not had carnal association with any woman for last six months, come and take this body. So finally he said, last three days, nobody came. So finally he said, I am taking my Guru Maharaj. And then he takes the body and then he builds the Samadhi. So we see the actually he was so strict because that's what he was seeing that they're in the garb of being Babaji's, being in the garb of sannyasis, being in the garb of spiritual, you know, I'm a great spiritual leader. They were 
misleading people and they were having sense gratification from the back door so that's 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 why he was so heavy on these things the conclusion is it's not to be pretender yeah But he's still pretender. So can you can you can you be also pretender, but you don't know they're a pretender. You're like unconscious pretender. <laughs> so is this some difference? Can you explain it? <laughs> See, the point is, Krishna is within our heart, so we cannot pretend anything, ideally. But if we make a show of being a great devotee or being or making a show of that I'm a great uh, ascetic person then krishna will somehow you know with his tricks he will make us fall on flat on our face so krishna is the biggest trickster and krishna knows our heart so sometimes if it is innocence krishna will give us the guidance from within heart that he knows that he is not a pretender he is just immature there is difference between immaturity in bhakti and pretendence in bhakti but the the point is if someone becomes a leader someone becomes like a big devotee and then he is a pretender and then he is accepting disciples or he is misleading such a big number of people then it becomes a chaos in the society and especially if such scandals when they come out then it gives a bad bad name to the entire community that's why there was one time like i said uh, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj started wearing silken clothes. He was wearing silk dhoti, silk everything. He said, I am not a Babaji like these rascals. Why? Because then it is giving bad name to the entire society. And whose society it is? Ultimately it is, ultimately it is Mahaprabhu's society. So that means, oh, you are Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He also must be, you know, like that, like you only. So it brings bad name to Krishna. It brings bad name to Prabhupada. It brings bad name to Guru Maharaj. So that's that's the entire idea. That's why we should avoid. Yes, Prabhu. Acharya Nartam Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Prabhu, um, when, uh, what we see from Gorki Shodas Babaji definitely he's a ghost yanandi his whole life okay so he doesn't just engage in bayam for some time and then he he does a, a preaching work he's ghost yanandi bayanandi his whole life mm -hmm. so in the life uh, no I, I mean he's a bayanandi mostly mostly bayanandi yes, okay, yes. Yeah. so <clears throat> but in the life for example of sila Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Vinod, and many other great spiritual masters, we see that they engage some time of their life in Bhajan. Mm. We can call it, they are Bhajan Anandis for some time, and then when they get some special Shakti, at least that is my observation, that because of that engagement in that particular Bhajan during that time, they get some special shakti, empowerment, they boom, they become <laughs> ghost <-yanand. laughs> So my question is, so Prabhupada engaged us 16 rounds, chant Hare Krishna, do this, do this, and, and you will go back to Godhead. And sometimes I question this in my mind, right? So if we want to do something big, big for Prabhupada, for this movement, should we engage ourselves in some type of that, like doing some bayan for some time? Or, I don't know, maybe you can clarify that, but mm -hmm. those thoughts, because by observing the life of how these devotees went through, uh, this, that's what comes to my mind, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can clarify yeah. or it's elaborate a, more into it's that. It's a very beautiful point that, see, you can become a preacher only when you have something to give and you become rich in Krishna Prem 
only by performing intense sadhana. That's why Śrīla Prabhupāda gave morning program first. So you wake up early, you see the deities, you chant your prayers, then you chant 16 rounds, and then you take prasad and then you go preach. Sri Prabhupada did not say you preach and we will do bhajan, kirtan, everything at night. No. First, you have to be strong with the sadhana and then only you get that shakti. Krishna shakti bina nahi tar pravartan. You cannot enthuse anyone unless you yourself are enthused with Krishna consciousness. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Maharaj did that too. For 10 years, he went in seclusion for 10 years. 10 years he became a Babaji. For 10 years he chanted 300,000 names of Krishna every day. And he was so austere. And when, while being so austere, while chanting Krishna's name so ent enthusiastically, profusely, immediately he would get up and he would write. So, our Śrīla Prabhupāda also said that my purports are my devotional ecstasies. Where does that come from? It comes from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj in those 10 years wrote so many books. He did not only do bhajan. While performing bhajan, he, he would, like you said, boom! He would get so much of enthusiasm, so much of power and he would write down. He wrote Manasiksha, Sajjantosha, so many books he wrote just by that bhajan. So there is always good chance and rather we should all do strong bhajan and that's Sri Prabhupada's program too. That Sri Prabhupada gave us the program that when you intensify your sadhana, then when we chant Krishna's holy name 16 rounds very intensely, then only we get the power to preach. Otherwise, we ourselves, we ourselves, like those who are book distributors, if you miss morning program, what happens? The day is not that good. We feel like, oh, something is lacking today. And it goes with everyone, even the people in general, the devotees who go to work. If they don't chant in the morning time, the day is not the same. They feel like, I'm so low on spiritual energy. You answered his question perfectly in principle, and I'd like to just give yes, a very please. specific <laughs> yes. Papa didn't recommend that program. Papa did not recommend that program. Matter of fact, he discouraged that program. The only time uh, Papa had us, you know, focus in on like a, a, the bhajan exclusively, Mayapur Brindavan Festival, one month a year. Papa said as many devotees as possible, he was an open instruction, as many devotees as possible should go to the Mayapur India once a year for the Mayapur Bandhavan Festival and they said, Papa, it's, it's very expensive, you know, to send a lot of devotees, how will we find them? He says, you find money to eat, you could find money to do that. Papa was a big advocate of the Mayapur Bandhavan Festival, so much so that even the Parikrams, that was not inaugurated by Prabhupada. When Prabhupada heard initially about the Parikrams, he said, why are they going out? They should <laughs> stay on the campus and read yeah. my books. That was Prabhupada's vision, that devotees come once a year, Mayapur, two weeks in Mayapur first, and two weeks in Vrindavan. At that time, they do, of course, the morning program, and then they, you know, use that time to study Prabhupada's books. And Prabhupada had the, the, the faith that the devotees had enough intelligence that, you know, they could utilize their time to do that. Um, aside from that, the intense bhajan, as he, Prabhu pointed out, takes place in the morning, and also Prabhupada's idea was the evening. Prabhupada introduced an evening program there's um, another Kirtan and I just as we were driving mm -hmm. back from Sankatan last night, mm -hmm. he was reading to me different things that Prabhupada said about the evening program. There was, wasn't just one. He, no. he wrote a letter to Gopi Janna Balaba. There was a room conversation in Delhi. There was at least, there was a half a dozen, right? At least a half a dozen where Prabhupada made it clear that he wanted devotees to go to the, not just the morning program, but the evening program as well. So that was the bhajan. The bhajan take, the, the intense bhajan takes place on a daily basis. But aside from the Mayapur Mandavan Festival, <coughs> Papa never recommended anybody to do anything like what Bhakti Siddhanta did, to take 10 years out to chant. Contrary, there was at least one, one, two, at least I could think of one devotee that possibly two, when they asked Prabhupada for a Babaji initiation, you know, so they could, 
Prabhupada wasn't into that. But when they mm. forced the issue, you know, they twisted Prabhupada's arm, so to speak, Prabhupada said, okay. And both of those devotees, they didn't last very long. They kind of mm. did it for a while, and then they just, off they went. That mm. Something else. So it's, it's on a regular deal. And you said, you said this. It's, it's, yeah. Intense bhajan is there, but it's meant to be con uh, performed on a regular daily basis. The morning program, and then Prabhupada actually wanted everybody to come back and go to the evening program. So you, you have ba intense bhajan in the morning, intense bhajan in the evening. That's why he, he Prabhupada, that um, phrase, the Krishna conscious sandwich, you know, that was like, I don't know if Prabhupada actually said <laughs> that, but that was like, he mm -hmm. always had that understanding, the sandwich. And, and devotees used to give class on that. If you have a sandwich, it doesn't have the top piece of bread, everything's going to fall out. You know, that was a, a standard, like, analogy or metaphor mm -hmm. that devotees would use. That was Prabhupada's thing. That's what he gave us anyway. That's what I remember. And I was kind of here for that, so. See, one thing we can understand, it's not easy to follow. Like, sometimes we think, oh, I also want to do it. But if you think practically and in our condition, it's, it may not be possible to take 10 years out and chant 192 rounds a day and perform such austerities. It's very, very difficult. It's like almost impossible for people like us. But, but what Shri Prabhupada has given us is that intense sadhana in the morning, that is possible in the association of devotees. Because who knows if we go in seclusion, we may completely, go, <laughs> completely get lost. That, oh, where is that devotee go? Oh, he blooped. He disappeared. And in the name of seclusion, we may actually be secluded from Krishna consciousness itself. Yeah, that's what happened with many, many devotees. So, Srila Prabhupada one time gave sannyas to many devotees in Mayapur. And that time, those sannyasis headed, uh, headed by Tamal Krishna Maharaj, they came to Prabhupada and they said, Shri Prabhupada, now we have gotten sannyas. Now we want to sit in the dham and we want to do bhajan and we want to intensify the sadhana. We want to, you know, do a lot of bhajan and read scriptures and be in the dham. Shri Prabhupada said, no, that's not the program at all. Shri Prabhupada clearly said, that's not our program. Rather, all the devotees, they were very young. And they thought that Prabhupada will say that, okay, you sit and chant here, be bhajanan on this. Sri Prabhupada said that until the day that we become invalid, until the day we become so old that we cannot move, practically, physically we cannot move, until that day I am going to preach. But right now I can still do a lot of preaching, so I am going to preach. So those, all the other sannyasis, they thought if Prabhupada is calling himself that I am young enough to go and preach, then we are like in twenties. So how much more we should be keen on traveling and preaching. But at the same time, Sri Prabhupada has given, like Bhrugupati Prabhu said, this sandwich program, this intense sadhana in the morning, intense bhajan. If we chant our 16 rounds intensely, then we ourselves feel the energy and we feel that there is nothing more that is needed. And in the evening also we have intense prayers, intense bhajan. And in the middle part we can have service. So just two brief comments. One is a, a, a well-known uh, slogan during Prabhupada's time. It came from Prabhupada's work now, samadhi later. So that, that sort of supports what he was saying. And the other thing is, you know, I was talking, we were talking about don't be a pretender. I just want to make it clear that although I'm aware of the standard, we were talking about the morning and the evening program, I just, I, and I was, you know, because I was talking like very strong, I don't do it. I, I just want to, <laughs> I don't want to be condemned as being, I, I don't attend the evening program, except for if I'm being asked, asked to give class or something like that. Otherwise, I don't. So it's, um, what to speak of, you know, taking a big long chunk of time out to do very intense sadhana, it's hard to do it on a daily basis. If you want to start someplace, just start by going to the morning and evening program. That's, yeah. that's quite challenging, you know? Yeah. It's quite challenging to do that. Yeah. And, 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 but that's Prabhupada's instruction for us. <laughs> okay. Is everybody satisfied? Yes.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> okay. Um, you said that uh, Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, at age 11, he he helped with Jaiva Dharma. He helped Bhakti Mnod Thakur write Jaiva Dharma and prove. That was seven. Oh, it, yeah. age seven. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I've read Jaiva, I've read Jaiva Dharma, and Jaiva Dharma does not emphasize preaching. It's more for like bhajan and nandis. <laughs> and I remember um, Prajumna Prabhu, the disciple of Srila Prabhupada, was saying how he was reading uh, Hari Nam Chintamani, and Prabhupada asked, "Why are you reading that book?" And Prajumna said, "Well, it's very nice. You know, it's helping me my chanting. It's talking about how to avoid the offenses." of chanting and Prabhupada said, why are you concerned with the offenses for chanting? You're still committing offenses? And he said, that book's not very important. The most important works of Bhakti Manu Thakur is Jaiva Dharma. Uh, so Prabhupada is saying that, and Jaiva Dharma is emphasizing more of like a Bhajana Nandi lifestyle, and Bhakti Manu Thakur wrote that book along with, you said, Bhimal Prasad, and we know Bhimal Prasad's brother is Lalit Prasad, and they had different opinions. Lalit, Lalit Prasad was more Bhajananandi. He emphasized, he actually says that Bhattanod Thakur's teachings more emphasize Bhajananandi lifestyle, which Bhimal Prasad Bhakti Siddhanta says the opposite, Goshti Nandi. So, how do we understand all that? See, Bhajananandi and Goshtanandi, how about that two distinct things, actually we can combine them. You see, Bhajananandi is Bhajananandi, that means no more Goshtanandi for you. You don't see that in any person who is 100% Bhajananandi. 100% Bhajananandi means he never gave any instructions, he never uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam because Bhagavatam is full of Goshtas, Goshtanandi. Goshtanandi basically means in, uh, talking about the past times, stories and indulging in different uh, leelas of Krishna. This, this Goshta. Goshta Nandi means in the association of devotees you, um, you know, share your hearts and you discuss about different pastimes. And Bhajana Nandi means only focusing on bhajan means you either chant Krishna's names incessantly, constantly you chant Krishna's names or only be in seclusion and focus on different uh, bhajans, different uh, poems that glorify Krishna. For example, our Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj, he would carry two books with him. He had only two books. Only two books in his entire lifetime, he had only two books. One is Prarthana and second one is Prema Bhakti Chandrika. Right. So only two books, both by Narottam Das Thakur, he would carry and he would chant those prayers, do bhajan from those books and chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So that's the Goshtanandi. But at the same time we see that he gave instructions. When devotees came, that's Bhajananandi. Because he is only focusing on prarthana, only chanting. One person came to him and he said, Babaji Maharaj, I want Krishna Prem. What should I do? He said, do you have 25 paisa? He asked, do you know this? 20, do you have 25 paisa? This, this uh, Prabhu thought, oh, oh, I don't have 25 paisa. Then he said, do you have 10 paisa? Then he's like, why Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj? He's the renunciate, he's the most, uh, um, you know, Sakshat Vairagya Murti. And why is he asking me for money? So he said, I don't have 10 paisa too. Final offer, do you have 2 paisa? Then he said, I think I can manage two paisa. What should I do with two paisa? He said, with two paisa, one paisa you buy prarthana and second paisa you buy the Prem Bhakti Chandrika. And that's all you need in your life. That's a bhajananandi. Now, then he asked that, why did you ask me 25 paisa in the first place? So he said that two paisa for the two books and rest 23 paisa for the service of Vaishnavas. So at the same time, he is encouraging for the service of Vaishnavas. The service of Vaishnavas also means you have to talk to them. That means you have to come out of seclusion, right? That means Bhajananandi and Goshtanandi, they both go hand in hand. They are the 
two sides of the same coin that's my humble opinion because i have never seen or heard of any vaishnava who is only 100% bhajanandi 100% bhajanandi he never came out never you know associated with the devotees as such and did not indulge in the beautiful pastimes of krishna so that that i have never heard and i have never seen anybody who is 100% goshtanandi because goshtanand begins only when you have strong bhajan so goshtanand the anand see basically is goshta anandi the one who gets pleasure from goshta and different you know associate or bhajanandi the one who takes pleasure from bhajan so one cannot get happiness from goshta unless one has already gotten happiness from bhajan so they both go hand in hand yeah no definitely he is he is also like that see haridas thakur actually is the best example to describe this why because haridas thakur is namacharya chaitanya mahaprabhu gave him that title that means he would chant and he is the best bhajananandi you can find he is the best bhajananandi why because he is namacharya and one can become namacharya only when he is only chanting 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 and chanting at the same time personal instruction of chaitanya mahaprabhu to haridas thakur nityananda suno suno nityananda suno haridas sarvatra prachar mor karaye prakash प्रति घरे घरे गिया कर भिक्षा बोलो कृष्ण भज कृष्ण करो कृष्ण शिक्षा गौरांग महाप्रभु इज टेलिंग हरिदास ठाकुर एंड नित्यानंद सुनो सुनो नित्यानंद सुनो हरिदास ओ माय डियर नित्यानंद ओ माय डियर हरिदास दिस इज माय इंस्ट्रक्शन फॉर यू प्रति घरे घरे गिया कर भिक्षा यू गो डोर टू डोर एंड बैक देम फॉर दिस वन request beg them this one thing what is it bolo krishna tell every person you go meet knock on their door and beg them bolo krishna tell them chant krishna's name bhajo krishna worship krishna and karo krishna shiksha that means learn about krishna so these three instruction so haridas thakur is being given this order even though he is the first class bhajananandi you can say that he is personified bhajananandi now chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying that oh my dear bhajananandi now you become goshtanandi now go door to door and give the gift of krishna consciousness to each and every one beg them to chant krishna's name tell them that krishna is your mother krishna is your father krishna is krishna mata krishna pita krishna dhan pran he is the wealth and he is the very life heir so that's the instruction Yeah I think yeah practicing and at the same you preaching, preaching yeah actually yeah brugupati bro that's the best example for this question haridas thakur is the best example because he's the best bhajananandi who is also goshtanandi yeah because these are not two things it's like the two sides of the same coin <laughs> and the best example of this is shrila prabhupad because when shrila prabhupada was in vrindavan living in radha damodar temple he was very intense with his bhajan there was one time prabhupada's god brother shared this that there was one time that i would hear some voices at night in the middle of the night and i would think who is you know who is talking or what is he what's happening so he would go climb on top and he would look down and he said that it was your shrila prabhupad that was having a conversation in the prayerful mood with rupa goswami samadhi and he would weeping he would be weeping incessantly and he would beg for the mercy from rupa goswami he would say that give me the mercy and give me the power so that i can go out and preach the message of krishna in the entire world 
this is the instruction i have been given by my spiritual master and please give me the power to execute his order so shri prabhupad ki jai shri prabhupad is the best example of this goshtanan who is the best bhajananandi and who also is the best goshtan best of both worlds shri prabhupad ki shri gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj ki jai तिरोभा दिवस गौर किशोर दास बाबा जी महाराज की जय जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपाल की जय नेता गौर प्रेमानंद